So, if you haven't heard, there's a show on Netflix called Girl From Nowhere. I didn't really know what I was getting myself into when I clicked on the first episode, but the experience drew me in and now I'm caught up with the entire series. So, how to summarize this show? Netflix has its description of the first episode as, Enigmatic student Nano transfers to a school that has recently earned the title of Pure School of the Year, but she soon exposes the ugly truth. But a good alternate description would be, Nano completely destroys the life of a pedophile by playing his game against himself, kills his daughter in the process. Let me explain the feeling of watching an episode of this series. You sit down, you start the show, Nano appears and you're like, what's this bitch gonna do this time? And not in a bad way. I personally am in love with the concept of Nano's character. Nano is the only reoccurring character in the first season and probably the most girl boss character Netflix has ever put out, ironically. And like, the episodes just get more and more fucked up as the series continues. Season 2 had me stressed the fuck out. The funny thing about Girl From Nowhere is that it clearly copies some actual songs that exist and edit them just enough to bypass copyright. I've heard Run, produced by Michael Abels, it was used in the horror movie Us by Jordan Peele, and the music that plays at the end of Midsommar for some reason. It was jarring the first few times hearing them used, but the music reoccurs throughout the entire series, so after 50 episodes you get used to it. What is Nano? Nano is a creature who takes fascination and amusement in how humans react to guilt, loss, despair, anger, jealousy, and other negative asterisk emotions. Yeah, creature. She has the ability to respawn, and she's always the turn of events that makes things go so, so wrong. So next we're going to go into a character that only shows up after season two. So if you don't want any spoilers for season two and want to go into it blind, I suggest watching the series and then coming back and finishing this video. You've been warned. Who is Yuri? Yuri is a surprise new reoccurring character who shows up in season two. Nano takes a fascination to her when encountering how absolutely demented she was, bringing her back from the dead. And Yuri's like, OMG Nano, thank you for reviving me. You're so cool. Can you teach me how you're so girl boss? and Nano says, lol, okay, I kind of vibe with your psychotic bullshit, why not? And now the time space traveling and immortal psychopath becomes the duo space time traveling and immortal psychopaths. So they make to be quite the petty and argumentative duo, but that makes the relationship so much more interesting. At this point, we're going into theories on the overall show. If you're not interested, leave a like and comment, and if you're gonna come back to this or watch it through, you might as well subscribe. Spoiler warning and trigger warning, bada bing, bada boom, let's go. So here's my main question question about the series. What is Nano, and how does Yuri relate to her? The difference is that Nano is lawful evil, targeting predators, making herself the victim, or damning people who deserve it into an eternal hell. Nano represents the uniformity in chaos, the natural balance of human emotions in some way. She's like a governing law, judge, jury, and executioner. Nano is the line between I'm making a mistake and you fucked up. While on the other hand, Yuri is neutral evil, taking things way too far as long as she gets to see people get revenge. She's working selfishly and for her own entertainment. And that's it. I don't want to spoil too much. I just wanted to talk about how good it is. If you like these type of videos, hit that subscribe button for me and leave a comment calling me a stink face. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting me. I hope you have a great day. Stan Nano. Bye.